Hello, I'm Elisa Verna from RT Book Reviews, and I'm here today with uh, science fiction author John Scalzi, who really needs no introduction. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi. We are at the uh, 30th annual RT Book Reviews uh, Book Lovers Convention, and I understand this is not your first convention, but it is your longest RT convention. Yes, that's true. <laughs> the, my first RT convention was actually in Columbus, uh, I guess it was a couple years ago now. Two, three years ago? Two, maybe years two ago. or three years yeah. ago. And uh, I was just there for the day because I live in Ohio, so mm -hmm. I drove over, I saw my agent, I, I had a panel and uh, just kind of wandered around going, wow, this is a little bit different <laughs> is than it? a science fiction convention. <laughs> the the male-female ratio is, is definitely <laughs> skewed. Uh, and uh, as I was saying to friends afterwards, they said, well, what is it like? I said, well, there's two types of folks, there, there are two types of men who are there. There are the male models and there are the authors, and you don't confuse the two. <laughs> so, although, usually, usually, usually know you know which one's which. Which one's which. <laughs> no offense to the male authors. <laughs> no, no, none taken. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is the one I'm actually here. I got in yesterday. Uh, it was Thursday. I'm here through Sunday, and so far I've been having a fantastic yeah. time. Yeah, and uh, you you won an award today. I did win an award. I was really very <laughs> happy about that. Uh, Romantic uh, or uh, RT uh, gave me an award for science fiction, which yeah. was which was neat for red shirts. For which red was shirts, an awesome book. Thank you, thank you so much. And it's it's one of those things where RT was actually one of the very first uh, awards that I won in the in the genre. I had won the Campbell Award, which is for Best New Author in mm -hmm. 2006, but then I won the RT Award for uh, Science Fiction in 2007 for uh, Last Colony, mm -hmm. and so uh, I kind of have a special place in my heart for the awards, and so when I won this year, I was like, I'm Cohen. You know, oh, I'm going to yeah. be there. We're so, so glad to have you. So here I am. This is a treat, um, but you have a new book. Yes, I do. It's called... It comes out next week. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about it. It's called The Human Division. Uh, it is a the fifth book in the Old Man's War series. Mm -hmm. um, although it's written so if you've never read an Old Man's War book mm -hmm. before, you can pop in and it will be fine. Mm -hmm. um, and we did it a little bit differently. It's coming out in print. Yeah, so it's not it's not a new book per se because it has already been released. Kind of yes and kind of no, yeah. <laughs> uh, we It's coming out in print um, May 14th, but mm -hmm. uh, the uh, parts of the book, we called them episodes instead of like chapters, mm -hmm. uh, came out serially one a week starting uh, uh, January 15th and then going through until like the first week of April. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did that literally we were like let's see if this worked. It was genuinely an experiment for us. Uh, we wanted to see if people would like that format, mm -hmm. whether they would follow it. Um, and there were also other challenges uh, in terms of writing it because mm -hmm. we didn't just want it to be cliffhanger tune in next week. Every mm -hmm episode, as we called them, had to stand on its own as a story. And they so do. You, yeah, yeah, so you got a complete story. But if you stack them all up, then you mm. see a larger narrative arc. And that was it was an interesting writing challenge, because I, I don't know that too many other books have been written to be read both as a bunch of separate stories and as a complete you know narrative arc. Mm -hmm. um, so writing that format um, was a lot of work, but that was the great thing about it. Simply mm -hmm. because, um, you know, I get bored really easy as a writer, um, <laughs> so I want to keep doing things that that are interesting and challenging and kind of push myself. And so right. this was something that, as far as we knew, I mean, people had done serialized stuff before, but like episodic, uh, written uh, episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody else, as far as we know, has really done that in a you know sort of industrial scale that we were doing it. So that was kind of a good challenge. Awesome. Well, it, w it was really interesting because um, I, I read the book and you kind of had two different types of episodes. You had the, ep you had the episodes that kind of formed the, the arc of the story and right. then you had episodes that kind of, you know, they were just like something a little bit extra. Like mm -hmm. they gave uh, a more, you know, in-depth story about a certain character. Right. Or, I mean, my favorite one was the dog, the dog king. Dog king, <laughs> Which yes. didn't necessarily, you know, have an impact on the overall plot of the story. But it was just really fun, and, and it was a lot like watching, um, you know, like a television series like The X Files, where right. they have like the monster episodes, and right. then they have like the more like the conspiracy episodes that affect the entire series. Well, and in fact, that was one of the things that I was keeping in my head. Is when you're doing something that's episodic, mm -hmm. uh, basically, if you just hit the hammer on the nail again and again and again, it kind of gets monotonous. You want to be able to do those asides. You want to be able to explore things that you might not otherwise been able to explore in a novel 
um, you know, just take advantage of. And now we're going to put the fo focus on this one character who otherwise we wouldn't learn that much about. Yeah. But the nice thing about it is, is even though there were episodes that were not advancing the plot, you could sneak things in so that, you know, make you care about a character more, mm -hmm. uh, give you a little more background about what was going on. So even if this was not being resolved now, we're going to do an, a second season, mm -hmm. so to speak, of it. And uh, when we do that, um, we can explore some of those themes further. A lot of those were just leaving markers in for me to be able to return to later if I wanted to. Awesome. And you, you've had some experience uh, doing, I think, creative consulting for right. television. Did that help you at all when you were it, writing this? It absolutely did. I was, the, I was the creative consultant for Stargate Universe for its entire run. And one of the things that you learn is just basically how they make things go. They have 20 episodes a season for the Stargate universe. They can't, again, they can't all be, you know, the same crisis or the right. same thing over and over because otherwise it just wears you down. So you have to have, you have to have those moments where you kind of take a diversion or that you sit there and you spend more time with characters that you wouldn't otherwise be able to simply because that builds the universe for the people who are participating. And this is one of the things that I think is um, great about science fiction and fantasy um, is that people are so engaged in it that even when you aren't writing something, mm -hmm. they will do fanfic and, and so on and so forth. And I think that this is a, a way of saying there's so much more to the universe that it almost, I kind of feel like this was might be the first fanfic bearing, you know. Do you, have you read any it? human division fanfic yet? Uh, not yet, not yet. <laughs> I've had- Is there any? I haven't, I haven't looked. I've I've had people come up and say, "I'm totally going to ship your novel, right?" You know, <laughs> and uh, that would be kind of that would be kind of fun. I, 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 there are two minds uh, among writers about fanfic. Some people think it's pernicious, mm -hmm. and some people think yeah. it's awesome. I kind of fall in the awesome camp because what yeah. it means is people are so engaged in what you're writing that they literally cannot wait until you do something again. Yeah. So they're like, "I'm going to go on ahead without you." If that's okay, yeah. you know, it's like, go, <laughs> explore my universe, you know. I might contradict you later, but until I do, you know, have a okay. great time with it. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Um, yeah. So I have to ask one more question about the human division. Okay. Do you have a favorite episode? Um, I do. I, well, I like the Doug King, as you <laughs> mentioned, because because it's lighthearted. It's a little bit <laughs> of comedy, <laughs> you know. And awesome. Yeah, 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 definitely. There's, so there's a little comedy there, so that that helps. But I also like, um, you know, the. There is one episode where we take a minor character named Hart Schmidt and we follow him home. I like right? that one too. Yeah. Yeah. This must be the place is what it's called, and I liked that because it's. If you didn't know that it took place in a science fictional context, it would be anything. Yeah, it yeah. would be literally like a, just a family drama where this guy is trying to find his place in the context of his family mm -hmm. and you know what he wants to do with his life and all that sort of stuff. And again, this was something that if I hadn't been writing it episodically, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been able to do. And people are always binary about these sorts of things. Why did you do that? There was no science. So there should be lasers there, you know. Um, and then there are other people like I really appreciate that you take time with the character because mm -hmm. it makes me care about that character. Yeah. Um, and uh, I did it just because I thought it would be fun to follow him home and see what, you know, his life was like. Awesome. All right. So you're also the president of the uh, Science Fiction Writers of America. Not for long. Not for long. But right now you are still the president. <laughs> right. For another two months. You have been for a, for a couple of years now, For right? three years. Yeah. I'll uh, have a three-year tenure. All right. And it's a, it's a writer's organization. Yes. Um, and you and the organization recently had some... Words, <laughs> I will say some <laughs> words with uh, Random House's new digital imprint. Um, yes, and I, I thought this was just so amazing that you know a, a writer's organization could get a big six publisher to change the terms of a contract because of criticism from a writing or organization. Well, I mean that's what SIFWA and RWA and Mystery Writers are, are for. I mean we are professional writers. This is what we do for a living. Um, I understand that what Random House was trying to do uh, with uh, these new electronic book divisions was try to be a little experimental, try 
to do uh, something new with the model. But what they were doing, in effect, was they weren't offering advances. Um, their standard contract was took a lot of rights that were otherwise not taken. Um, and so even though they were trying to be innovative, the innovation was working to the overall disadvantage of writers everywhere. Um, and if a writer's organization can't or won't step in and say to anyone, not just you know the small fry, but to the you know to the big companies, no, this isn't right, and it's not fair to our members or to writers in a general sense. Then why do you have the writers organization at all? I mean, that is what we're supposed to be doing. Um, so for Sifwa to basically say to you know uh, to Random House, no, in fact, this is not the way it should be and we will fight you tooth and nail and we will make a big ugly stink about it um, that was just you know we on the board we were like yes this is going to happen you know to the credit of you know Random House they said okay yeah. you know they backtracked and they offered they'll still do a no advance and uh, you know higher percentage of the back end net um, or they will do an advance plus, you know, a more, mm -hmm. you know, a more standard contract. And while I'm still not 100% happy about, you know, the no advance thing, at least they're offering the choice, and we will see kind of where it goes from there. But um, yeah, no, that's what we're supposed to be doing. If we didn't do it, then there would be no reason for anybody to join our organization. All right. So you said you're not going to be the president for very long. You have a few more months. I, I know it changes over in, in uh, July, right? Right. The 1st of July, uh, Stephen Gould, who is yes. a... A fabulous writer, and uh, he wrote Jumper, yes. which has been uh, adapted into a movie. Mm -hmm. uh, he will take the reins, and I've been doing it for three years, which is the longest anybody's done it in a consecutive year after year after year. And um, and I think it's time for me to go, not just for my own personal mm -hmm. things, but I, I really have a strong belief that organizations are stronger when you have a new mix of ideas. Right. There'll be some people who have been on the on the board of the directors right. uh, who have been there for a few years who can catch them up to speed. It's a democracy. It is a democracy. <laughs> it is. You know, you elect your representatives and, uh, you know, and then they go and they run the organization mm -hmm. for you. But the, so there's a mix of old and new people and uh, I'm really looking forward to his tenure. I think he's going to do a great job. Well, if you had one piece of public advice that you could offer Stephen Gould as the uh, upcoming president, what would you, what would you, what would you say to him? I would say to him, <laughs> I would say to him, Stephen. <laughs> Your job is to herd cats. <laughs> and by what I mean by that is that um, there are 1,800 members of the science fiction fantasy you know, writers it's in not, America. It's not actually all cats. It's not actually all <laughs> cats. There may be some cats. But uh, there are 1,800 members, uh, and they are... Uh, you know, all ages, all political persuasions, mm -hmm. all, you know, some of them are, you know, traditionalists when it comes to publishing. Some of them are trying some of the innovative new stuff and self-publishing. They represent literally every aspect of the field. Um, and his job is to listen to them, you know, understand their concerns, uh, and get the organization moving in a direction that basically, as broadly as possible, helps as many people as he can. Also, he's sort of the head of the board, and I've been blessed in the three years that I've been president with really good boards, people who are smart, who are engaged, uh, and all who believe in the mission of SIFWA. Most of those people will be back. The new people, I think, believe the same thing, uh, but they all have very strong personalities, and sometimes you have to be careful that strong personalities don't overwhelm the fact that you are all trying to work together. Um, so a vast you know, majority of my job is basically taking the temperature of the board, making sure you know we're all walking in the same direction when we're not trying to figure out what it is. So for him I would say, you know, that's your job is to be the mediator, to be the consensus builder, to be the guy uh, who is available to um, you know resolve these problems. Um, and if he can do that, then like I said, 80, 90 percent of his job is done and the rest of it is just being a genial figurehead. No nope, no pressure. No pressure <laughs> at all, Stephen. Good luck. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for coming to the RT convention this year and chatting with me. It was truly a pleasure. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.